All right, a little bit of an unusual free-range sailing here today. We're enjoying the hospitality of, enjoying the hospitality of Dr. Andrew. Just here. Mm -hmm. And um, what this is all about, yeah, I know it's a bit out of sequence. I know that we're still crossing the Gulf of Carpentaria, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but um, in reality, we are here in Thursday Island, and I want to talk to the good doctor about some things that might face yachties from of a medical nature and also he's going to show me how to listen to a land cruiser drive past <laughs> but also um what get a hook out yep yeah because that's something I've, I've been wondering about and also just a little bit of uh wound care he's going to teach me how to do some stitches so um what what's a bit of your background mate uh, so I work here as a GP surgeon, a rural GP surgeon, and I've been here for two years, yeah. um, living and working here. It's been, Very, pretty challenging, eh? Yeah, look, it's, um, it's, it's awesome and horrible all at one time. <laughs> right. uh, I've got uh, four kids and wife up here, and it's a long way away from family, but there's some amazing fishing, um, amazing people, yep. amazing patients, amazing scenery, amazing water islands, chopper rides, the lot. Everything. It's, it's an awesome place to work. Um, so yeah, look, it's it's been it's it's good fun, mm -hmm. and I uh, meet random people like Troy, very random, um, which is which is always a pleasure. And uh, yeah, that's uh, I guess I, I grew up in northern New South Wales, yep. med school or sorry high school in Brisbane, med school in Townsville. Um, and now I'm here. So a GP surgeon, so you know better than I do about fixing people up. Sure, I think it's probably important to. <laughs> State that I'm in no way an expert here, um, and I guess this is just a, a good old chat about what we do. If people uh, want, you know, hardcore evidence-based uh, stuff, they can do their own research. Own research, yeah. And also, we are talking about some med medical stuff here. Um, I've done my senior first aid, and I always have it refreshed. And anyone going um, out to sea on a yacht, they'd be mad not to be first aid trained at least. Absolutely. If you don't know what uh, doctors A, B, C, D means, if you don't know how to do CPR, if you can't uh, address, you know, some so basic emergencies, uh, you need to think, think really long and hard about um, what you're doing if you're going anywhere offshore. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. That's probably, if, if that's all you take away from today, that's pretty good. Um, you can, you can forget everything else hmm. the rest of this is just you know little bits and tricks to maybe semi MacGyver yourself out of trouble when yeah you run into some yep. run some some problems when you're fishing <laughs> yeah okay so what I've brought along with us today is one of our first aid kits and this is if you open yourself up and red stuff's coming out so the first thing I want to talk about and I'll get your is in the past I have cut myself pretty badly and the top bit of my finger was hanging off all right um, I, I actually stuck a knife through my finger the scarring's not too bad and what I fixed that with was super glue yes right. <laughs> cyanoacrylate it's good stuff that's the stuff so um, you can look up the history of super glue a lot of people say, oh, in World War II it was used instead of stitches and the Vietnam War, or it was invented for the Vietnam War to, to help soldiers. It was used uh, in the Vietnam War as a, as a stop gap, just to stop people from falling apart before proper medical care. But it worked for me. Um, and that was just standard super glue, but I've since gone and got this stuff. What is it? So this is a medical grade super glue, cyanacrylate. Uh, this one's made by Ethicon, it's Derma Bond Advance, this is the expensive stuff. Um, you can get various forms in various preparations. This is a pen, it's got lots of volume in it, it's super easy to apply, I use it all the time. Not that I have shares in the company. Uh, and essentially <laughs> the, the role of this way, you just break the glass canister here, it comes through the tip and you apply it like a pen. Uh, it uses, I'm told, heat to activate rather than actually drying but check your sources um, and this is really good for addressing small lacerations uh, where you might not want to suture or you might not want to might not have access to local anesthetic like the majority mm. of the public um, and look it's great for kids as well it's where we predominantly use it uh, in rural journalism and look it's, it's great in the right setting so in the Troy's right setting. finger 
I used I used just stock standard hardware super glue. Sure. Yeah. And look. And you know what else I've done is um, I was working with a guy from Vanuatu. He had a big cavity in his tooth, and it knocked him out of action. We put hydrogen peroxide in there, waited till it stopped bubbling, and then we just <laughs> we capped it with super glue, and he was able to go back to work until we could get him to dental care and about seven days after sure absolutely look and um, that's probably the most important thing with dental care is get it back to work pain relief oh right okay pain relief and making <laughs> sure you don't have a swollen face and a massive infection which is occasional um the other thing this is great for in the dental world is if you've got a fractured tooth you can yep. you can spot weld the tooth the fracture back on purely for analgesic purposes you might have lost that bit of tooth for sure but if you can get that tooth dry enough and your patient's still enough and you've yep. got enough light and exposure, so spread those lips and good light. Uh, you can actually weld with the glue the tooth back on without sticking yourself to mm. the lip, etc. etc. So it's good stuff to have. I would strongly recommend having this, or if you can't get a hold of this, some super glue on board. Super glue does have an expiry, or it doesn't last forever. Yep. Even the stuff that you get from the hardware, after a year, it's not going to be any good, so just be aware of that. Um, and super glue, it it actually sets in a moist environment, so it will, it'll hold cuts together. Such a good word, moist. Moist. Um, that's a really good point with glue use. Uh, if it's too moist, i.e., there's blood welling out of the wound, you will not achieve success. A proper um, stick. Well, that's when when I cut my finger. Um, now you'll know this from your first aid. You want to stop bleeding. You pressure. All right. So I held that for a good five minutes or so. Um, it stopped bleeding and I was able to just sort of tack it with some super glue, put a smear of it over the top, and it sealed it really well. Like I've, I've got very little scarring from that. And this was three years ago. I've I'm, I'm just about got full feeling back. This whole thing was like a little cap. Hang well on. done, well done. We're twinsies because I had chopped the tip of my finger <laughs> right. off, but without the flap. <laughs> and uh, it was too much, and we did stitch it back on, and it died, which yep. was lame. Uh, and I am getting some feeling back. But okay. uh, look, I think, I guess a little disclaimer, the management of D-tipping and finger injuries is complex. Absolutely, in a rural, remote setting, what Troy did is great. If you do it near a local doc, local hospital, you go there and just, just go there. get someone who uh, yep. has some experience. But yeah, look, perfect example of use of a clean wound uh, that d you don't want to stitch. If you can get that to hold the wound closed, awesome and it is important not to glue a foreign body inside yourself <laughs> right. yeah so so good clean good light and this will come up a couple of times good light good wash out dry it up for that good light to a good hygiene and uh stick it down yeah. who would have guessed all right so that's the the, the first takeaway super glue you can <laughs> right use it to close small wounds now the next thing that's in this kit is i do actually have a suture kit here and we're going to get a bit of meat and Dr. Andrew's going to guide us through stitching up a hole. So we've gone out, we've got a bit of pork belly here, um, it's not going to go to waste, we're going to eat it afterwards but right now it's going to stand in as our casualty. So again we're going to grab the skin edge, we're going to lift it up, ideally perpendicular to the skin we're going to go through with a nice sharp needle yeah. Just going to make it less painful. Okay. If really you should re-grasp and go through the other side, you can sometimes do it all in one go. So we're going to grasp there and come through. And without anaesthetic, this would be pretty uncomfortable. Uh, right particularly now. that initial thing. But again, we're using a nice sharp needle. So you know, look, it's doable. I wouldn't recommend it for recreational purposes. Sure. So again, we've again got short and long. Yep. Force up in the middle. Double throw. So long, double throw round. Yep. Grab the Grab short. Grab the short. Okay, swap hands down, so we've got now a nice, nice surgeon's knot which is going to hold some tension while we re-grasp, okay? So that's bringing the wound edges together reasonably nicely. Yep. Okay, hopefully that holds tension. If it doesn't, there are some other tricks. Again, put this in the middle, single throw this time, grab that end, lock it down. Now that shouldn't slip now, but because it's always possible, we're going to throw another couple of throws. Again, swapping ends. Okay. Oops. Not classy. Okay, and that's what we've done, right? <laughs> so class that off and leave them long so you can find them. 
Leave them long so you can find them, yep, okay. And I'll just quickly show you that again quicker. So again, through, I'm going to do it in one go this time, don't do that unless you're happy. You know what I've learnt from, from this especially? What's that? Um, it's just reinforced to have good knife control because don't do this. I've, I've never actually seen how much damage my one of my sharp pocket knives can actually do if it was... That, uh, that did way more than I was expecting actually, Troy. I was quite impressed. I thought you were going to make some lame cut and we are going to have to actually do something a little bit more traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> well, all of my knives shave. And that's really. that's uh, something to be careful. So look, you can do nicer jobs, but that's got the skin next to each other. What distance are we looking at between stitches? Whatever, whatever works for you. I guess that's probably, to be honest, if you want to assess this, you know, the good, bad, and ugly, uh, that's probably too far apart. So I'd probably put another one in there because that's gaping like that. Okay. So what do you reckon about five oh. to six mil? Yeah, it would be a quarter inch. Doesn't yet? Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes, in depending on on the skin where it is, that might be fine. Uh, put one in the middle of the wound is what I'd say and then just start halving it. It's probably easy. So let's say you okay, go that's here. Okay, that's a great idea. Yeah, come here now and I'm not going to do a pretty job of this but just for demonstration purposes, you know, don't put it through the nipple. That's never a good look. Um, you know, come down here and then just close it as required. So see, that that's a good example of nice skin opposition. See how we've put it together so you can barely see where that cut was? Yep. They're at the same level. They're not overlapping like that one is a little bit. Yep. That's what you're aiming for. I mean, look, at the end and of the day... And that's going to reduce your scarring. Oh, for sure. Um, it'll, it'll end up with a much nicer result, probably reduce your infection, risk of infection, etc. Um, if you can achieve that, that's great. And the best way to do that is just by taking equal bites either side, making sure you've got the same amount of tissue height, Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, you're not going to do this much, so getting it closed is the most important thing. Now I was really grateful for Andrew and his patience. Um, he you know, ran me through putting those stitches in, and look, just watching this video, don't even kid yourself that you're anywhere near ready putting those stitches on, and in fact, what I really got out of this is the importance of prevention rather than cure. But having said that, um, we do have the suture kits on board, and having a practical run through, we, we had a good 15 minutes of doing this. I, I have to be in a better position than I was before because I have actually done it. Alright, if we're going to, we've decided that the wound is too big for super glue. And how big, how big would that be when oh. this is not an option anymore? I'd like to say that 1.2 centimetres by <laughs> right, 0.5, sorry mate. Uh, look, I think it's common sense. Have a go with the wound. If but it's if not it's, working, then yeah. But if you've got a gaping wound that's maybe you know more than a couple of centimeters, and it's got depth to it, yeah. And it's an area that moves. This is not really going to work. Um, okay. This might be a secondary additive, but at that point, if you can't get medical care soon because you're on a slow boat, um, which you I might am. consider applying stitches. Yeah. So I do actually have some sutures here. Um, and so I just want to ask you about that. Anesthetic, you know, it's not just widely available. You can't go down the chemist, just ask for anesthetic. So what, if you're going to do some sutures, what sort of pain relief? Can you put ice on it to help? Can you, like we, we do have some panadine fortes, which is strong codeine. Is that going to help us out? Sure, yeah. So uh, I would choose to go for a bottle of rum, but... <laughs> I don't know. Like, make your own adult decisions, but um, I think, you know, rum certainly has its role. Uh, panadine for, be careful when large volumes of spirits are involved, but it is a good, strong pain relief. You've got paracetamol, which yep. is just, should always be used. If you've got pain, start with paracetamol. We call about, we talk about this la pain ladder, you should always start at the basics, because yep. they always work. Paracetamol, unless you've got horrendous liver disease, do that. Um, ibuprofen, so Nurofen, Brufen... How know. will they go if you're going up the ladder, like you're saying? Had some Panadine and you're going up again, is it going to all combine and cause a problem? Or? No. no. Okay. So unless you're going to our hospital level drugs where you're adding lots of morphine and fentanyl, uh, it's not an issue. You no. can definitely have Paracetamol. I almost always have Paracetamol and Ibuprofen. Yep. Okay? They act somewhat differently uh, and as long as you don't have medical issues that prevent you from using those and you need to speak to your own doctor about that but 
Panadol, Nurofen, take them both. Mm -hmm. I re unless you're profoundly dehydrated, don't take Nurofen, or you're on other drugs, be careful. Um, they are both fantastic simple analgesias which will not cause a drowsiness or any other issues. Some people think Nurofen might have issues with bleeding. I don't, agree. I don't think at, your, at this level it's an issue. Yep. And then Codeine um, is a commonly available, although we require a prescription as of recently, um, is a good morphine-like analgesic, um, yep. can cause constipation in continued doses, uh, does cause some drowsiness in some people, depends on how you metabolize the drug, but that will give you some level of pain relief for the wound, it might help you tolerate being stitched. Being stitched. And I think the beauty of your situation, I don't know if that's the right word, is you're not going to go stitching in just anything, because unless you have like anesthetic, <laughs> you're going to think long and hard before someone sticks a needle on you. That said, if you have the right equipment, it's the least painful way to be stitched, right? Okay. A sharp needle. A proper, cool. yeah, it's, a we're proper, not just getting a sewing kit out. Yeah, and look, if, if you and I on a boat, we didn't have any of that, and I had a sewing kit and you were bleeding out, I would definitely get into it with that. But that's going to hurt more. So having, you know, having the right equipment mm. is going to help. Yep. Um, so yeah, Panadol. I think the key messages are Panadol and Nurofen. Yep. Um, codeine-based preparations, if you have them. Ice was actually a good suggestion. And distraction. Distraction. Uh, seriously, get your patient or you wiggle your toes. Think about being somewhere else. Get someone else to just rub like this okay because you're you're activating other nerve pathways which are going so your to inhibit going to have to divide you're going to act, they actually inhibit pain signals sometimes a noisy old car yeah okay yeah, yeah. so touching you know wiggling just distraction as the best things you can do so when you're a little kid and you you bruise yourself your mum actually giving her a bit of a rub and stuff like that she knew what she was up to she did she was all over it it's been your mum's works yeah yeah sure cool what else are we talking about what else we got now before you go sealing up any sort of wound what do you want to do you want to i've got look a bunch of saline solution here is that what you want to be rinsing your wound out why is this in my first aid kit uh yes. irrigation solution yeah so i guess um this is always good to have i'd recommend squeezy bottles so you can actually get some sort of jet yep but you know this is better than nothing you can make your own um you know by boiling water for five minutes and then adding a couple of teaspoons of salt yep um don't inject that but uh that's good for just wound cleaning and uh, what you want to do again with the right light and having stopped some significant bleeding you want to just get all of the Debris, foreign bodies, devitalized tissue. So if if you if this is an old wound, well, if this was a mackerel bite, for instance, we'd want to irrigate it because the teeth of that mackerel would have something on there. There'd be some makingness on there. There'd be some, sure. yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be. Yeah, you just want to get all of that out. And if you can, maybe I don't know. Do you have some gauze in there? Probably not. In in because this is one of three first aid kits sure. yeah. um we do we've got some gauze we've got all sorts of stuff there let's pretend this triangular bandage is gauze yep pretty much is yeah, it's not a bad idea if you can or your patient can tolerate just uh using that to physically bribe the wound just keep it clean if this is an old wound let's say someone came to you from another boat with an older wound and there were literally gray black bits of skin and tissue they need to go okay so you might need to trim that away but a fresh wound give it a really good rinse and rinse until you're bored or annoyed and then double that yep. is probably the right amount um, so what we're talking about here is that you are away, you're about a week away from medical help because <laughs> this is, when I did my finger I didn't actually go and seek medical help so I'm being a bit of a hypocrite here but look if it gets to the stage where you're stitching yourself up um, a doctor needs to have a look at it because you don't know, you might have included something in there, particularly what, what, if you've done the stitch, what's the aftercare? What are people looking at? Like red area, certainly pus and stuff coming out's a bad sign. What, what, how are you going to manage that once you, once you've closed it? What would you be? Sure. So I guess the things, once you've hopefully achieved a clean wound and then a closed wound, yep. and, and I think probably something we should talk about is managing an open wound because you don't have to actually close it. No, you don't. Yeah, sure. Um, if you've got a closed wound, uh, the risks of a closed wound are infection. Mm -hmm. If you have trapped something in there, or if you didn't quite achieve the cleanliness you wanted, 
or even if there was a dead space there. So you've closed the wound and there's a there's a cavity underneath because of tissue loss or just the way you closed it. Mm -hmm. You can achieve a bit of a blood clot in there or even just a, some serous fluid in there and that can then get infected. The things you're looking out for are redness, pain, mm -hmm. swelling. Pain over and above what you would expect. Increasing pain. Okay. Yeah? So pain should be getting better or at least not getting worse. Okay. If, if it's if it's getting worse, that's a problem. You've either done something wrong with your stitch, which is hard to do if you're just stitching skin, or it's getting infected. And that typically happens three, four, five, six, seven days later, not within 24 hours. It'd be very rare for it to okay. be 24 hours. So think this three, four, five days later on track. You're looking for redness, swelling, pain, um, and you're looking for pus coming out. That's that's a bit late of a sign. If you see that and you put stitches in, the absolute first thing you need to do is cut the stitches out, open the wound, release yep. the pus, give another clean, don't stitch it back up. And that's, I guess, where we go to the leaving wounds open. So if you can't close it, you don't feel comfortable closing it, you don't feel comfortable stitching it, as long as you're not bleeding out from it, just leave it open. Your body has all sorts of mechanisms to heal from the bottom up. So we call that healing from second tension. So if you've got a wound, you know, if your skin's up here and you've got a wound there, it will slowly fill up and contract into a scar. It'll be a bigger scar. It'll be a bigger scar, won't it? But you know what? Your risk of actually developing infection in a normal person, normal healthy person, is lower if you leave the wound open, but it takes longer. And the cosmetic result is less. Okay. So again, if you stitch the wound closed, it gets infected, open it up, clean it out, let it heal from the bottom up. You need to not get that covered in seawater, mackerel blood, mackerel guts. Yep. You need to take appropriate care, dress it regularly, keep that dressing clean and dry. But you can leave it open. All right. Well, that's an option. If you know that you're going to be there in six days, you might end up with a bigger scar. But uh, you, you can do yeah. this for weeks if you want. You know, you, if if you're going to do that and it's not in a critical area, it's not getting worse. Yep. If so that's in, clean bandages and. You're not going to put betadine all through it? Doesn't you can, matter. You can. Uh, not super strong betadine, you know, you, you don't want to damage the tissues, but yeah, you can apply an antiseptic to that wound. Alright, so people do have that option. They can leave the wound open as long as it's not bleeding. They've stopped the bleeding and they're just putting a clean dressing on. Regularly. Regularly? Yep. Okay. As, as required to keep the wound clean. So don't leave it on for four days, you know. Probably clean it, it change it one to two to three days, depending on how yeah. frequently it soaks through. If it starts, certainly if it starts to smell, you're leaving it too long. <laughs> if there's maggots in it, you left it too long and the maggots did your job. All right. So, yeah, we're not talking about little cuts here. We're, we're talking about, like, we're in a remote area. A shark has, you know, opened us up. There's, or a knife. You know, people cut themselves, the boat moves. <laughs> Um, yep. you gotta, you're going to have to do something about it. Um, what else did I want to talk to you about? Before we get into the practical part of doing this, um, another thing, people in the tropics, they might be wading around in the shallows. A stingray might uh, you know, puncture them, and it, it actually carries venom into your, into your body. Mm. So what can you do there? You know, you're, again, you're about a week to 10 days away from any medical help. Can we manage that? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the size of the stingray, really. Uh, well, the stingrays, um, I've seen two types of stingray injuries in my past. <laughs> One is they slash, and it's like a knife, and mm -hmm. it's it's an open cut, but it's envenomated. Mm -hmm. And the other one is a puncture wound. Yeah, I'd say the, the puncture is most common. As long as it's not to your thorax yeah. um, in a big stingray, then it's going to hurt a lot. It might bleed, usually not, mm. not a lot that's a problem, pressure will do it. I think the the best evidence is for warm water, warmest you, the hot hot water that you can tolerate um, and that typically results in significant pain relief because that actually denatures the protein of the venom. Yeah, it's it cooks point. it. It's a protein, that venom. So. Yeah, cooks it, not you. It's an important concept. Uh, there are cases of people actually going a bit too far. Going a bit too far. That's usually in the setting of local anaesthetic, so not an issue here. Um, and uh, that, just continue that. As long as you can tolerate it, get some paracetamol, ibuprofen, codeine on board. That mm. takes 15, 20, 30 minutes to get working, so the sooner you get that going, the better. Um, I guess, again, good wound management. So good light, good exposure, get some instruments, have a look, wash it out, make sure there isn't actually a barb still stuck in there. Usually there isn't. 
Yeah, hard, hard to do like, with the puncture, but yeah. Yeah, and I guess the that's a good point to talk about tetanus. So, if you're from Australia, you should have had tetanus vaccination, but we talk about, you know, if you haven't had it in the last five to ten years, if it's a tetanus prone wound, which is pretty much any wound in the tropics uh, on a boat um, that has any sort of depth to it, as long as it's not graze, it's a tetanus prone wound and you should really be up to date with your tetanus if you're on a boat. Before so you set you, sail? If you're going to set sail, um, just get your tetanus up to date, you know, you get your pertussis, your whooping cough vaccine at the same time, it's all in one go, get that done. Yeah. Um, it saves you the pain of going, oh, I'm 10 days away from civilization. I just got a tetanus prone wound. Should I get it sorted? Because the worst case scenario is you actually get tetanus and that would be um, unfortunate. Not too. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, well that was interesting because when we were hanging out with Roland at the Wessels, the Aboriginal treatment for it was hot sand. So they were onto it. They knew. Yeah. So heat. And so any sort of venom really from marine stings, that's lionfish, uh, stingrays, it definitely helps. It's, yeah. Look, a stingray's going to hurt. They are just crazy. And the barbs are actually backward pointing. It, it, it rips and it leaves venom in behind. <laughs> just a bad injury. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So those puncturing it, marine innovation, in, envenomations that are local pain, hot water. It's always hot water. And then wound management, and then oral sort of analgesia. Pain relief. Tetanus. Yeah. Since I was quite young, I always saw that the way to get a hook out is to just, if it's in there, if it's in your let's say it's in your body, was to wrap some fishing line around there, push down on it, and yank it out. Mm. Let's, uh, let's have a look and see how that goes. So we've, uh, we've used some of these bugle-headed screws to hold it down, because a person's skin, they'll be able to hold it still. <laughs> so this is the best way we're going to do it. Watch that beer, mate. Sword. So how do we want it? We'll just chuck it straight in there, hey? Sure. Get in there. It's quite quite hard to go through the dermis and it's pretty hard to come back out. Love through the it. dermis? I love this. Yeah, so that's, the, that's the thick, you know, uh, tough part of the skin. So the epidermis is the out, outer layer. Yep. Uh, and then the dermis is the thing that gives it strength. Okay. And there's a decent amount of that on this pork belly. Alright, so wisdom would have it that... Yeah, that hurts. Wisdom would have it that we make a loop out of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's... Oh, look at you throwing a... Surgical knot there. Let's tie a surgeon's knot. See, I'm impressed. I see, like it. Seeing as how I'm like in the it. company of a surgeon. Oh, nice. So, we'll put a lark's Ow. head in there. We'll just put a lark's head in there. What's that? No? Oh, you're just hurting me. Oh, yep. That's right. Just <laughs> It's not a very good simulation, is it? So that's... Yep, so this is, this is the classic thing you'll see in a lot of textbooks is, yeah, you want to put... Pull okay. in this direction, in the in the direction of the um, bar. Let's, let's not do it in the direction of your eyes. Oh, okay. How about that? Fun. So conventional wisdom is that we push down on the eye, okay, and just yank it out with the with the with the fishing line. Fuck. Look pretty good. <laughs> it's because this is the thin thin dermis. That looks pretty good actually. So that works. Should we try it again? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we, I chose. We shouldn't have chosen nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about the nipples. All right, so no, let, let, okay. Let's let's change tack. That's a good option. Okay, so yeah, well we're trying this out. Yeah. All right. So if you've never seen this before, um, this is what's recommended. We're pushing down on there, and just a quick yank. Ooh. Oh, ow! Yeah, look at that one. And Ooh! It, sometimes it doesn't work, Troy. No. So yeah. Let, let's push it in a, again. And we'll just give it maybe maybe I was giving it some twist. So before I was pushing it's right all down. It's about on that. this angle. And yeah. you're gonna cause trauma doing this, but you're gonna do, you're gonna cause trauma either way. So it's gotta be as flat as possible along the skin perhaps? Yeah. Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> that, that. That caught the nipple on the way. Oh <laughs> some nip action. Right, okay. One one more, one more. One more for funsies. I'm gonna get a close up of the pain. Gee, it's it's tough to get in there, isn't it? Yeah, and this is the skinniest 
bit of dermis, all right? So, so downward action here, and you want to pull up in this direction, hence the light mono. So are we looking good that way? Yeah, it looks good. And... Nice. That, that... So... Short period of pain. That was that was pretty that was pretty effective, and I think the angle was what we were looking for. So the angle was pretty much parallel with the way that's going in. Yeah, yep. And so you are gonna you are gonna get some trauma with that um, barb coming. Oh, you're cheating now because you're using the same hole. Oh well, yeah, but um, it's, so that's 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 catching pretty good. Yeah. So we'll do it one more time. And also, I think I was giving it a bit of twist before, whereas that's just like that push, our angle. Yep. Alright, well that, that's a great example of how to get it done quick and dirty. Yep. And um, I like it, but as we saw, yeah. sometimes it doesn't work. The idea behind this uh, style is that if that's in the tissue, what you want to do is you want to put the hook into the barb, and instead of having a sharp hook, you're having a straight bit of metal. Is that giving you a good representation? Yeah, that, look, that looks great. Some close. Uh, and you want to just angle it out a bit, so instead of digging through and causing trauma, you're opening up the space. Okay, you've got to get in there, opening up the space and pulling it out. We're going to use another needle or another hook straightened, and we're going to sneak along the shaft of the, the hook, okay, until we find the apex of that uh, barb, we're going to open the angle a bit and pull in the same direction as what Troy was doing with the mono, but using that angle we're going to come out like that. Now that's less likely to tr cause trauma, um, it's going to be safer for any of the structures running underneath and uh, it's, it's a good technique to have up your sleeve if you want if a difficult hook removal when you're a long, long, long way away. Mm. So this is a little bit different for you because, well, it's a bit of pork nail to a board. Mm. Um, and no anesthesia, and you're normally used to incredibly good lighting and an 18 gauge sharp needle, which would... Yeah, which allows me to actually, if I think there's a little bit of tissue caught in this, uh, you know, a bit of fascia or something, I can just cut it with mm. the actual bevel of the needle. So look... Uh, so what did, what did you think about that old fashioned... Well, I have to yeah. say, I was impressed. It seemed to. If you can get the angle right first time, that's going to be less pain because it's less duration. You know, it was fast. Wasn't it, it was fast, and I think for small hooks, it's going to be perfect. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's those bigger hooks with, and I've seen ones with much nastier barbs than that. Oh, yeah. That that's when start thinking about employing this. Um, so a big shark hook, I would definitely be looking at doing that. Absolutely. But, but that size hook and down. I think I think that would be pretty good. I think good. we've almost no. I won't say we've categorically proven, but that, that was a great example, and it's made me a believer in that technique. To be honest, you've taught me something, Troy. How about that? There you go. First first time on free range sailing. That, that I've taught anyone anything. <laughs>